Hey, I'm Jason. Um, I'm Git Bisect on Twitter. I'm the community manager for Velocity, um, which many of you are here for, here to talk about Conway's Law and open source, or more specifically, about how Conway's Law is wrong. Um, Conway's Law is incomplete. So in 1968, Melvin Conway wrote an article with a bunch of observations about how software is designed, how organizations design software. People randomly sort of selected one of these observations as a law. That observation said that organizations that design systems are constrained to design systems that are copies of the communication structures of those organizations. It's fair enough, but he had a better observation. His other observation is that your first design is never the best, which actually this GIF, clearly not the best. It totally failed. We all can agree that this should be the law, right? We, we have experienced this. I'm sure everybody has. So the problem is, if your software is bad, and your software is based on your organization, how do you change your organization? So Conway noted that not only would this be extremely embarrassing for people, it would also be very expensive and very, very painful. 1968, waterfall, we all know this. So he made one final observation, and that observation was that the flexibility of an organization is highly important and critical to the effectiveness of the design. So as I mentioned, Conway's law is wrong. And I think he's wrong because he's just incomplete. He missed a few things. So we can take this observation, and we can rotate the words around and find some other really useful observations. For example, the flexibility of design is important to effective organization. We see this all the time. Companies adopt rigid software. They have to create all sorts of crazy workarounds, and they become ineffective. We can also rotate this one more time and say that effective design is important to flexible organization. In other words, the software that you use can change your organization and make it better. So let's talk about the software that you're using. Puppet Labs did a study earlier this year, and they found that the typical modern application contains 80 to 90% of open source components. So who's really designing your software? You are not designing your software. And the great thing about that is if you're not designing your software, it means that you're not constrained to have software that copies your organization. So who is designing your software? If it's open source, the open source community is designing your software. So you have to ask yourself then, what can you learn about your software from the community? There are many things about open source communities that we can learn. Um, for example, open source communities do not have HR departments because we're all volunteers. But more importantly, it's because humans are not resources. Resources are things like power and money and time and minerals. And they're meant to be used and eventually exhausted. And people are not. People are more like service providers. We use resources. We accomplish tasks. The great thing about service providers and looking at open source software is a lot of software is starting to be service oriented. And the great thing about service oriented software is that you can integrate diverse services in the same way that communities can integrate diverse perspectives. There are a whole number of other things that we can learn about community, but I challenge you to consider the community. Consider who's building your software. What assumptions have they made in their software? And in turn, what assumptions does that mean for your organization? Conway's law, again, was wrong because it was just incomplete. So I challenge you, after you observe your software, turn Conway's law into Conway's loop. Take advantage of those assumptions that communities are making about your software and your organization, and in turn, use that to make your organization better. Thanks.